Gaming meets with the government, a new Pokemon game shakes players to their chromosomes, and baseball will be played on the 360 after all. All of this and Legos today on the grill. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the January 12th installment of GamerNode.com's Hot Off The Grill. Senior Editor Jason Finelli is here, as always, ready to serve up the biggest gaming news of the past week. Let's get right to it. As part of a gun violence task force, Vice President Joe Biden met with members of the gaming industry on Friday, including ESA head Michael Gallagher and EA CEO John Riccatello. In a statement to the press, Gallagher called the conversation productive and candid, saying, quote, we expressed in the meeting that the United States Supreme Court recently affirmed that the independent scientific research conducted to date has found no causal connection between video games and real life violence. We also recognize that gun violence is a serious problem in our country. We are saddened by the recent tragic events, and as an industry integral to the social and cultural fabric of America, we look forward to continuing our engagement with government officials and policymakers focused on meaningful solutions. Vice President Biden, who also met with the National Rifle Association and movie and TV industry executives, will present the findings to President Barack Obama on Tuesday. Now, I'd like to think that the gaming industry did the right thing here, but something else tells me that we were defeated before we even walked into the room. As Gallagher stated, gun violence is a serious problem in this country, and there's nothing people like more than someone to blame. I hope Vice President Biden will refrain from casting us in a negative light, but I am not holding my breath. In the first Nintendo Direct of 2013, Nintendo President Satoru Iwata revealed the first 3DS entries in the Pokemon franchise, titled Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. The brief teaser showed off full 3D locales, Pokemon Stadium-like battle animations, and five new Pokemon, the three starters, Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie, and the two new legendaries, Xerneas and Evital. I personally got up at 6 a.m. on Tuesday to watch the announcement live, and I can sum up my reaction quite simply. Pokemon! Pokemon was the pokey of the man in the thing where the guy comes out of the thing and he likes to fall out of that. <laughs> the new games will launch in October 2013. Another week of only one new release, but this one shouldn't keep you in limbo for very long. So pull up those chairs, grab your frosty mugs, and get ready for a devilish taste of what's on tap. DMC Devil May Cry, a reimagining of Capcom's famed franchise, hits store shelves this Tuesday. A lot has been made about Dante's new younger look, but when has changing a character's look ever affected how a game is played? I personally would like to trust Ninja Theory, makers of the excellent Enslaved Odyssey to the West with this franchise, and it still looks like the demon slaying good time the series is known for. If you can get over the hero's new look, oh he looks like Mick Jagger, pfft, whatever then there's no reason you won't enjoy what's on tap this week. 2K Sports is heading back to the baseball diamond with this week's announcement of Major League Baseball 2K13 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The series was in jeopardy after last year's offering, but this surprise announcement means, among other things, that baseball will return to the Xbox 360. The game is scheduled to release on March 5th, and 2K has also announced that the Million Dollar Challenge will once again be back. So 2K is announcing a sports title for the first time two months before it's scheduled to release. Is anyone else as worried about this as I am? What could they possibly change in two months' time? Were they working on it all along and waiting for Major League Baseball to realize, oh crap, we're not gonna have a game on the Xbox this year. Better start talking to 2K. I certainly hope these guys have an ace up their sleeve or else I am not confident about 2K13. The biggest Marvel superheroes are getting the blocky treatment in Lego Marvel superheroes as revealed by Game Informer this week. Heroes like Captain America, Thor, and the Hulk are all getting lego fied in a surprising partnership considering that LEGO developer TT Games is owned by Warner Brothers, who also owns Marvel's main competitor DC Comics. The LEGO games are and have been a smash hit with fans of all ages, and I can only imagine the same will remain true with LEGO Marvel superheroes. Now if you ask me, this opens the door for LEGO Marvel vs DC. There you go, TT and Warner Brothers. You can have that one for free. Give it to me, Superman, Sentry, please. And yes, I did say Sentry. You all know who he is, right? That's all for this week. Tune in next time for more delicious gaming news hot off the grill. Now, we will be missing a week as my trusty videographer will be out of town next week. We will be back better than ever on the 26th. 
Until then, stay hungry, my friends, and as always, thank you very much for watching.